top. No chaser. Ladies and gentlemen, confidants, welcome to the Hennessy Zone. Straight talk, no chaser. This place was created for those topics that require, well, a little something stronger than just champagne. Over here, we think and drink responsibly. Now, let me give you a disclaimer. Everything discussed in the Hennessy Zone, all of the commentary is based on my opinion and is done so in accordance with the Fair Use Act, which allows for these discussions for the purpose of entertainment and teaching because there's wisdom to be gained from everything, whether it's good or bad. Now, we don't attempt to solve cases over here, but we do discuss them. And I love to hear your opinions about each of the cases we discuss. So please do me a favor and drop in the comments and let me know what you think about today's case. But keep it respectful because this is a safe place and we got to let them know the classy drink Hennessy too. So this particular story is being brought to us by TikTok from a creator's page by the name of Danisha Ma. And I ran into this creator in covering another story that I'm going to cover on this channel. And I looked on her profile and ran into this story time about how she and her children kind of took in a neighbor's daughter that was being neglected by her mother. So I'm going to let you know now as a disclaimer, for those of you who are triggered by stories about children, this story does have to do with neglect of a child and the measures that this young lady is taking to make sure this little girl is protected. What I would like for you to do is drop in the comments and let me know as you listen to this story, what you would have done in this situation and what you think about this situation. Now, after the conclusion of the video, we are gonna get into some discussion about this because we are gonna talk about this mama. Yes, we are because we spend so much time as women talking about these men and how doggish they are and how horrible they are as fathers that we let some of these mamas get away unscathed. But not today. When the video is done, we will have a discussion about this mother and mothers like her in general. So Hennessy Zone, get ready for this story by Danisha Ma regarding a little girl that she calls baby girl. When do y'all feel the appropriate time to call CPS on somebody? Because I know how people feel about CPS and they be like, no, 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 don't call CPS. The system is fucked up and this, that, and the other. And you wrong for getting them kids to... Let me just tell y'all story time. So yesterday, my daughter friend knock on the door. Literally 10 minutes after they just got off the bus, everything, we come to the house, whatever. I'm like, we finna go run a few errands so no, they can't um, come out to the park or none of that. I'm thinking her mom is taking them to the park, y'all. I'm thinking her mom is taking them to the park. I'm not knowing none of this shit is going on, but okay, cool. So I tell her after we run our errands, then, um, you know, they'll go to the park or whatever. Yada, yada, yada. So we go run our errands and stuff like that. I go to CJ Maxx, Target, da, da, da. So uh, we get back. We head to the house. My was like, can we go to the park? Can we go to the park? I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, y'all can go to the park. So um, I, I'm driving them to the park. You know what I'm saying? They get out. They run over to the park. It's a little bit warm, y'all. So so we get to the park, y'all. Um, so I look up. Her friend is there. So they get to playing with each other. Now, I am in the parking lot in my car um, listening to music. And I can see my kids. You know, ain't nobody at the park but them three. And I'm looking around, I'm like, where's her mom? Her mom was not there, y'all. So I honk my horn for my kids to come back to the car because I'm like, I don't want to be here too long. You know, it's time to go. So they start running to the car. Um, her friend is just sitting there on the swing, just swinging by herself. So I'm like, oh, dang, now she ain't got nobody to play with. So um, I'm like, Mary, where's her mom? She said her mom put her out. I said, what? She was like, yeah, her mom put her out. Every time she put her out, she comes to the park. She walks to this park by herself. Y'all, the park's so fucking far from my house. The girl's only eight years old. She is my son age. Her and Josiah is in the same class, but she like friends with Myra because Myra girl, Myra um, six and she's eight. I'm like, what? So boom, I tell Myra, tell her to come on. She not finna, you know, be outside. Y'all, she gets in the car. She is freezing cold, literally shivering. We was gone for about two and a half hours. So that means she been outside for these whole two hours by herself at this park and she's only eight years old 
she get in my car she's all warm nice and warm i take them to holiday get them some snacks y'all know the kids get something to drink get them some snacks we head back to the house i'm like i'm gonna get ready and cook she did not want to go home i did not know her mom was at home myra said her mom literally put her out and so i was like i'm gonna go up there and talk to your mom whole time y'all the mama not there the mama left and went out to eat with her boyfriend so y'all at this point i'm frustrated as hell because it's just hard hearing stuff like that and it's so fucked up like this baby eight years old so anyways um i bring her to the house i cook some spaghetti whatever she eats she smashed these kids having fun they watching tv playing with each other making a whole bunch of damn noise but whatever so i'm telling my boyfriend everything that's going on i'm like because listen he told me but I just didn't think too much of it. He like, babe, something going on. Because listen, one day she knocked on my door at 12 in the morning. And I'm like, um, my kids are asleep. Um, you got to stop doing it. Because she knocks on my door a lot. And I'm like, you got to stop doing it. The kids are asleep. So um, she was like, okay. So anyways, I closed the door, locked the door, whatever. I'm taking my kids to school in the morning or taking them to the bus stop. Y'all, why she sleep outside of my door? He woke her up. He like, hey, what's you know what's going on? He said when he took her upstairs because I had to get school, and he uh, walked her upstairs and he said, wasn't nobody even in the house? And I'm like, did she leave for work? Did she like you know? He was like, nah, that was just too fucking weird. So when I asked the mama about it, she was like, oh yeah, we was there. We was just in the room. She comes back, y'all, like the next day, knocking on my door. Um, she got her braids pulled out. And I'm like, what happened? She was like, my cousin did it. I'm like, oh, okay. I wasn't thinking too much of it, y'all. Like, I don't know. Like, I was not thinking too much of it. But now, when I knew, when Myra told me yesterday, Myra was like, well, mom, that's why my stuff been coming up missing. Because, y'all, I've been looking for certain outfits. Myra like, girl, where you sweat at to this? She been giving the girl her clothes. She been sneaking food. A whole bag of chicken nuggets came up missing. But when Myra told me what happened yesterday, I I, I kind of put piece and shit together. Like, you know, pizza, waffles, all type of stuff just been coming up missing. Myra been taking my food out of my house, giving it to the little girl. Now, y'all know how the system is. What if I do report what I see what's going on and they don't take the girl? What if they don't do nothing? What if they just come out and tell her everything that was said and do nothing? And now the mama just gonna probably beat her ass for her telling her business. She gonna probably tell her she can't even come back down here no more because she gonna know exactly who called. She gonna be like, yeah, you can't go down there no more. So now the little girl just in the house by herself. Cause kids are, I'm, I'm sure she's scared of her mom because she was still protecting her. She didn't want to tell me nothing. Myra was telling me stuff. She did not want to tell me nothing. But I know right now they finna get out of school. I am about to take her to Walmart, get her some clothes that she can actually fit um, because she wear high waters, um, dirty clothes. She be digging out the dirty clothes basket to um, get clothes. And I'm like, y'all don't got no washer and dryer in y'all unit because I do. And she said, no, um, they don't have a washer and dryer. And I'm like, mm, dang, but they got a two bedroom. I got a three, so maybe, I don't know. But um, I'm like, you can always bring your clothes down here, y'all. I don't know what to do, but I'm just going to go take her shopping to get some clothes, um, get her some food. Um, to give y'all an update, um, I did call the police. Um, and they was like, call child protection. I told them the whole story, and they was like, call child protection. Um, they was like, if you, they was like, do you see any bruises, burns, or any marks on her? Um, then it's gonna be hard for us to just come out and just, you know, remove a child from from the home. It, it's gonna have to be investigated. Um, you know, we can't just go off what you're saying type shit. And my friend said she feel like because, you know, they feel like she's in a safe space. Um, if I would have called while she was at the park, um, maybe they would have came out and got her but it's like y'all i don't know yesterday i wasn't just thinking like oh my god let me just call the police i'm trying to figure out what's going on as a mother i'm like you know get in the car let me take a look get something to eat you know like i wasn't thinking rationally like i wasn't thinking about oh my god but i called child protection 
Um, also, the police did tell me to take her back home. He said, take her back home. Um, he was like, I understand you're trying to do a good thing and all of that, but please take her back home. Um, so whatever, I ended up taking her back home and I also filed child protection. Um, and they just took all the information down and they was like, we'll keep in touch with you, you know, um, but y'all, at this point, what's, what's going to happen? Like, what's going to happen? Is they going to call her? Is they going to come out? Like, what is they going to do? Because they already said they not they can't just come out and take her. So what is they going to do? Stuff like this makes me really, really emotional because that's why kids just don't speak. Because nobody do nothing or take nothing serious. For the police to say, um, unless I see bruises, marks, burns, um, they can't just come and take her. Like, damn, y'all have to wait until then to come and, and to do something. So, um, I don't know. Right now, all I can do is just help her. Tomorrow, we gonna go out. Um, um, like I said, get her some clothes, hygiene stuff, products, whatever, soap, tissue, anything that she needs, I'ma get it. And for the people that are saying like her family gonna send her the video, um, this and the other, know I'm talking about her. I mean, if she sees the video, she's gonna know I'm talking about her. But um, her family, I don't know her family. Her family don't know me. They don't know we live in the same building. We're not friends. We don't hang out. I just moved here. Like, I don't even know all my neighbors in this. The only reason I know her is because she, you know, my kid's friend. Like, she goes to school with my son and um, she plays my daughter or whatever. So. And I'm not the type of parents who post my kids' school and all of that, so I'm just confused on that. People don't expect certain videos to go viral. I posted that for my, I, my TikTok is my family to give me advice because, like I said, I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. Like, what do I do? Am I gonna put this baby in a worse situation? Or do I just call him and not give a fuck? Like, you know, so I really wanted advice and it shit. But it blew up, and I'm guessing because it involves a child and, you know, neglect. So, I didn't expect it to, though. I was just asking for advice. But um, now I feel way worse than what I felt before. And I just hate that it was me who had to see that. And, you know, why couldn't it be somebody else? Like, we got so many. This is a big building. We got so many neighbors. I wish it was somebody else who had saw it. So, now that's going to be on my mind. It's gonna be hard for me to sleep. I haven't eaten nothing all day, y'all. I'm so hungry, but I don't even have an ap appetite. Like, I can't eat. I was gonna drink and sip, you know, but that, I just, I don't feel right right now. I don't feel, I don't know what it is. Maybe because she's up there, or maybe because I called, and, you know, I'm a little worried that they finna just tell her, like, everything that was said. I don't know. I'm like, I just don't feel Yes, right. I did take her upstairs last night because the police told me to. But, like, if y'all watch my story times, I said this little girl knocks on my door all the time. So, she was at my door at the crack of dawn this morning, and I opened it. Um, I told her, anytime you hungry or anytime you home alone, come down to my house and let me know. Even if you want to go to the park, let me know. Don't you ever go to that park by yourself. At this point, I got three kids. I got three kids. So, um, also, y'all, I have a professional coming out to braid her hair. Shout out to her. I'm not going to post this baby no type of way. I'm not posting the back of her hair. I'm not posting her boss, but I'm not posting none of that um, because it's a higher chance that her mom can't see it. I asked her, do her mom be on TikTok? She said, nah. But if I post her baby and they do got family and one of her family members see it, they're going to be like, oh, this who you talk. I'm not going to do that. Um, so, but shout out to the person that is coming to do her hair and shout out to the people that's donating toys because she don't have no toys. She said, um, you know, Myra was like her family didn't celebrate Christmas. Um, whatever. So we finna get her some toys. Um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I should keep everything at my house or let her take her to her house. Um, I don't know because I know she want to play with her toys. But like I said, she be down here a lot. So maybe I'll just keep it at my house. Um, but yeah, shout out to everybody that's in Minnesota that is helping. TikTok is saying that you are an amazing person, that you are a hero, basically, because you helped your friend. You was giving her, sneaking her food, my food. Had me think I was losing my mind. <laughs> but next time, I don't want you to not tell me, okay? Okay. I didn't want you to get mad. 
I wasn't gonna get mad. I would never get mad at nothing like that. I was just trying to help her. I know, and now I'm helping her. We in this together, right? Oh, girl power, say girl power. Girl power. Period. Okay, hey y'all, so let me give y'all an update about my bonus child, I guess. So baby girl did open up to me a little bit more, but I'm not gonna talk about that because it's personal and all I'm gonna say is it's deep. But um, I've, been, I've been talking to a CPS worker and they said they are, basically they on my side. They trying to help me become a foster mom. So if anybody have any additional tips on how to go about doing that, please let me know. I mean, she told me the steps and everything, but I kind of want to lock it in and secure it. So I want foster parents to kind of flood my DMs with advice. I've been reading y'all advice, everything, and I swear to God, shout out to everybody that have sent me something. I don't care if it was a dollar. Y'all, I literally bawled out crying because... Somebody sent me, it was like $10, but they was like, the note said like for a coffee or whatever, because you are a hero or something like that. Y'all, I broke down crying. I broke down crying. But y'all know I have a three bedroom. Um, so far as like inspection, I think I'll pass inspection. Um, I might have to upgrade Myra bed um, because she have a, a regular full queen size bed or whatever. So I might have to get a bunk bed in her room. But far as like everything else, y'all, I swear to God, y'all helped me so much. Like, but somebody told me that um, if her mom found out that I called CPS on her, um, that she could tell them like she don't want her to come with me. I don't know how true that is, but if it is true, I'm a little bit scared. That kind of scared me a little bit. Um, but once again, her mom is not talking to me. She haven't said anything to me. Um, her daughter comes down here every day. I feed her breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Every morning I fix her hair before school. Um, and she goes back upstairs around bedtime. Um, but I tell her like, you know, let me know if your mom not there around bedtime. Y'all, she don't come and check on her. She don't, <laughs> she don't give a fuck. I'm not talking to her. I'm not... Y'all, my support is crazy. Like, my friends accepted her. My dad called me and was like, I wasn't even thinking of nothing. He was like, why you didn't tell me I got, my dad's so animated. Why you didn't tell me I got another grandchild? I'm like, what are you talking about? He like, I got another grandchild. I'm like, I don't know. I'm thinking he's talking about his other kids. Somebody got a baby on the way. I don't know. He was like, I saw your TikTok. I'm like, oh my God. Oh, okay, yeah. So that just lets me know that my dad is here for me and that's my only family that's in Minnesota. So it's like, oh, y'all want to support me on this journey. I'm not asking for no money. I'm not asking for no, all I'm asking for is a prayer. I want to be able to take this baby into my home. Um, yeah, it might be a lot. It might be a little bit more, but I'm willing to do it just because she got a bond with my child. She got, she's starting to bond with me. Um, she's already in school here. It's what the middle of the school year. Like we can't, we can't have this baby going nowhere else. And it would kill me to not know that she's okay or what's going on if she do go somewhere else. Like, you know, so let's just, just pray for me y'all. To kind of flood my dms with advice hey i'm cindy i am a foster parent i've been tagged so much in your videos and so i wanted to do a message just put it on tiktok so everybody can hear the advice that i'm going to go ahead and give first off i'm going to say that i'm so proud of you number one for even reporting to cps because that is scary for a lot of people especially if it's somebody in your neighborhood someone that you know it is scary to do so but sometimes you need to second of all i already can tell you'd be a great foster parent because you have told us the whole story without telling us the story and that is exactly what we need. We need people who can tell us the story without giving any kids information, any family's information, things like that. So I'm, I'm, I'm loving that. Now, to become a foster parent, um, you have to look up a agency in your area, um, and then you gotta do the classes, and they will guide you through all of it. It is easy after that, after you look it up, and they'll give you the list of classes, you just have to take them. Now, some states, CPS does license, and it kinda sounds like yours does if you're saying that CPS is gonna help you become a foster parent. Some will. Here in Texas, they don't have that anymore. CPS is no longer licensing. But that would be wonderful. So I do love that CPS is wanting you to become a foster parent, but there's two huge red flags here. The first is that she does live next to you 
and having um, mom right next to you, although it would be an amazing thing for the child to still um, be able to see her mom, unfortunately, that's not how it would go. They would have to have you separate from her completely. And so even walking by her could, could, could be dangerous. And so for not only for her, but for you, right? And things can start great, but as you put the best interest of the child first, sometimes the parents do not um, respond to that well. And sometimes they do. Now in your video, you had said you have not talked to mom. The thing that, the, that's gonna be real hard because for me, building a relationship with mom is important to get the child back, right? That's what we're hopeful for. Um, but being neighbors is really, really hard. But girl, I do not, I do not doubt you. I do not doubt you. You sound like you're just ready to love this baby girl. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm here for that. And the second thing, not really a red flag, but it's waving to me is that um, mom can say no to you taking in her child. Now, ultimately CPS does have the final say, but bio parents are able to give a list of family members and friends that they believe could take care of their child and CPS has to go through that list um, because although the parents are getting their child removed they still respect their wishes on who they want their child to be with now if that list falls short and nobody is available that's when a child does go into foster care so every single child removed their parents are able to give a list of family and friends that could take their child in and if that list falls through then they go into foster care but if you are talking with the caseworker, I mean, yeah, with the caseworker, CPS, and you're very open that I want to do this, then they may push it over to you, which would just be amazing. But again, protect yourself, document everything, um, start a binder if you can about the things you've already done, the things you've already seen, um, because it sounds to me like you would be a wonderful foster parent. It sounds like you have the room for it. And sometimes this is how it happens. Sometimes you, um, foster care falls onto you in that way and you might be the best person for the child and it sounds to me like you are. So yeah, that was a lot. But girl, get your license, talk to an agency, literally look up your city, I don't know where you live, city foster care agencies. Hi, I need to become a foster parent quick. How can I do that? And they will literally give you the list of what you need to do. That list looks long, but you can do it. So, um, I, I, I hope you go that direction. Um, and if you need advice, my DMs are open. I have been a foster parent for, for almost over four years now. And um, that's the advice that I can give you. But stay strong, document everything. Um, remember the child's best interests come first, which is exactly what you're doing. And don't let anybody fade that from you because they can. Okay, now anybody still here, if you're wanting to become a foster parent, um, what that looks like is that um, after you go through all of the classes, it's a lot of hours. I think I did like eight, eight hour sessions. It's a wild. Once you do that, you'll have a home study. What that looks like is they'll come walk your home. And I'm talking, they're gonna open everything, look at everything, make sure um, things are safe, things are locked up. They'll tell you exactly what to lock up, um, you know, medicine, things like that. But they're gonna make sure it is safe for a child. They're gonna make sure there's a room with a bed and a window and um, that you are financially stable. They're gonna look at that. Uh, they're gonna look at people around you and they'll interview them about you. So it is a process, but I know it sounds scary, but you can do it. And they will walk you through it, what exactly that looks like. You can be single, you can be married. Um, you can't have any, any records or anything like that, but um, we need great foster parents. So please, if you're even considering it, I urge you to even just get the information because we need people like this, like her. I cannot tell you how much I can see a foster parent in her. So we need that. So if you have any more questions, let me know. I will answer them the best I can. Okay, so let me give y'all an update on baby girl, but. First, I just want to say this. I know that the story went overly viral and a lot of people are like, you know, it's it's all of our business now. Um, but it's certain stuff that I just cannot talk about and I won't talk about because of what I am trying to do, uh, which is a little bit difficult because, like I said, me and her mom live in the same apartment. But at the end of the day, whether she comes with me or whether she go with, you know, somebody else, I still want her to be safe now. Y'all be commenting on my videos that don't do not pertain to that situation whatsoever. And y'all be like, what's going on with the little girl? What's going on with the little girl? First of all, calling her the little girl is just so disrespectful to me. I do not like that. Call her baby girl or call her my bonus child. Like, you know, I know I, I know I know y'all don't know her name, but like calling her the little girl is just like 
I just don't like that. Want to start blocking people who comment on stuff that if, if it's no update, it's no update. I haven't gave no update, but I'm gonna give y'all an update now. So mama is tired, y'all. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. I'm not gonna fake it. I am I am very tired and I am very trained. Um, my birthday is next week on February 28th. So, you know, I've been like, you know, lit, whatever. I've been trying to, you know, turn up. But I was drinking last night, having a couple drinks, whatever. And I went to bed at like 3 o'clock in the morning. And right when I laid down, you know, she comes knocking on my door. Which, like I said, I always open my door for her now. She has a fever. She's very sick. She's been throwing up. And, you know, I asked her, like, you know, what's going on? What's wrong? You know, she, like, my stomach hurt. You know, like, she's just really sick. So, I'm like, is your mom upstairs? Her mom is upstairs. So, I'm like, um, I'm going to take you to the, to the ER. Like, I'm going to just take you to the hospital. And maybe we can get you some help. So, I go upstairs just to ask her mom, like, is it okay if I even take her to the hospital? So, I tell her, walk in, ask her. I went up there with her. Her mom yells out, stop fucking bringing people to my door. So, for everybody that studies saying, talk to the mom, maybe she'll just... No, I'm not talking to this bitch, because I'm going to end up doing something to her. I'm not talking to her. But, anywho, after I hear that, I'm still trying to ask her, Can, is it okay if I take her to the hospital? She like, I don't give a fuck. So I bring her to the ER, y'all. They didn't even want to take her because I didn't have her insurance card or none of that. I give them her name. I tell her till they let her last name, her date of birth, all of that information. Um, they don't even want to take her because they all about money. And that's, that's so fucked up. This baby got a fever, like, and then it's a kid. They didn't, they didn't want to see her until I said, you could bill me the fucking, bill, bill, bill me the, um, the bill. Bill it to me. Like, bill it to me. The fuck? So, we was in there for hours, y'all. And like I told y'all, I was tired. Mama is so tired, y'all. And before I even went to bed, I let them play. I let them run around. I let them do whatever. Like, you know, and they be loud. Um, and it be a little bit harder for me to take naps and stuff like that. So, I'm just, like, so tired. Y'all... I told the doctors and the nurses and everybody what was going on, and they was just like, you know, you call CPS, okay, that's good. Let's just, um, you know, wait and see what they do. And, you know, it's like nobody, like, she just don't have a voice. Like, it's so fucked up. So, anyways, they asking her, you know, I'm like, I feed her all the time. So, like I said, I think she's eating, like, undone food or uncooked food because she go home and she try to cook stuff in the microwave and like she just got expired food in her house or she probably ate some moldy bread or something trying to you know i don't know what she got upstairs i try not to send her upstairs with food but it's like i'm probably finna have to start because she done it she went two days without coming down here i asked her why she didn't tell me why but um like i said she comes down every single night and she goes up there for bedtime when it's time for bed now my kids i done they done got caught trying to sneak her in after you know and i told her like you have to listen to me you have to when i tell you you gotta go upstairs you have to go upstairs i'm not trying to torture you i'm not trying to you know what i'm saying i'm just if, if i don't get permission from your mom for you to spend a night you can't spend a night so we ended up coming back from the hospital. Um, I'm not gonna really go into all full details of what really happened at the hospital, but yeah, we come back, um, you know, and she lays down, I'm, I'm tired. She lays down with me right up under me and just fall asleep. And baby, she pooped out all of what was in her life. She pooped it out. Um, she just had re really bad diarrhea. Um, she is feeling a little bit better now, but she still kind of got like a little fever. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I'm like really stressed. My birthday is next week. I was planning on going to New York and I can't just have like my babysitter watch her too because they live somewhere else um, in a different city. So it's like, it's gonna be hard. It's, it's just too much. And I don't think that I'm finna go and celebrate my birthday um, in New York because of this situation, which I'm not really mad about. It's, I got more birthdays to come. I got other times to just go and have fun. But right now, I just want to make sure she's okay. Like, if I'm out of town, I don't want her to, you know, not have nothing to eat or, you know, her mom doing something to her. And I'm just so far away, you know, until CPS figure out what they, what the, whatever they doing. Like, 
<sighs> y'all it's it's a lot and it's really taking a toll on me honestly but i got it i got this. oh my god would y'all look at this she said can we focus on the child at hand when i'm so lost when did it become about your birthday so i paused the video in order to explain to you guys how we ended up right here so apparently because her birthday was coming up she made a video explaining how a lot of people were telling her to start an amazon wish list because they wanted to send her gifts and support for her birthday while she's taking care of this little girl there was also some people who told her they wanted to give her a spa day and so she's really thanking the people for the support that she's received because she said she doesn't have friends and people never really do anything for her. So she was thanking the people for supporting her while she's supporting this little girl. And apparently one of the people watching made a comment that basically said, how did this become about your birthday? Why can't we keep it about the little girl? You know, dumb shit like that. But I wanted to explain to you how we got here because this is now, um, the next video is a response to that comment so I did not post the video of her talking about her birthday because that was really more a part of her life and I wanted to keep the videos that I did share about um, baby girl as she calls her so let's continue and find out how she responds to this troll in her comments what i be trying so hard not to address negativity and like you know the trolls and like weird comments but this just irritated me because Clearly you didn't watch the video. What are you talking about? I literally said in the video, since child protection ain't doing what the fuck they was supposed to do, I don't want to take my trip to New York because my babysitter will watch my kids for the week, for the weekend, and they'll be good. But I can't bring this baby to my babysitter house and be like, oh, watch her too, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I can't do that. So I, I will be stressed and worried while I'm in New York about this child that I know they be knocking on my door, they be hungry, knowing her mama neglect her. Like, it's just, bro, I'm just confused. On, <laughs> I'm trying not to get mad. I'm just confused on what you saying. Like, what do you mean? Like, what? When did it become about my birthday? You only get one. At the end of the day, I'm still a person. You only get one birthday a year. So if someone wants to do something for me, um, you know, just, just little stuff. It's not like I said, oh my God, y'all, uh, fund me a trip to Dubai, whatever. Somebody said they're going to give me a spa day. Why are you so mad? Why are you so mad? Like, people weird as fuck. Like, oh my God. Like, this is a situation that's heavy on my heart. This is something that I'm actually living. This is a situation that I'm actually going through with this baby. Like, y'all y'all just watching the videos, y'all hearing the story, and y'all listening, and then you, you, you say some dumb shit like that. Like, I'm just making it all about my birthday. You having something or nothing. Send her a coat. Send her a sock. Since it's less focused on the child at hand, send her something. Because I do this shit by my motherfucking self. And somebody said they want to give me a spa day. And you talk about why is it about your birthday? Because my birthday is next week. Despite everything that's going on, yes, I still want to celebrate my birthday. Yes, I do. I'm not going out of town. But I do want to celebrate my birthday. Y'all, my birthday tomorrow, and I should be drinking and enjoying myself right now, but let me just address this. Apparently, uh, people have been questioning whether my story about baby girl is real or not. And let me just say this. First of all, what do I gain from making up a story? Followers, I've been had followers. Go viral, I've been going viral. And, and don't nobody know when they gonna go viral. So when I did the story time, it was genuinely to ask for advice. Like, when is the right time? I was never not gonna call, but I wanted advice. I wanted advice and for everybody and, and it's crazy because the negative comments coming in to where the, the people like yeah I, if i saw a baby sleeping outside my house at 12 o'clock in the morning or whatever in the morning i would instantly call this is a child that lives right upstairs from me like i didn't know what the fuck was going on i was gonna speak to her mom i was gonna see what the fuck was going on like i don't know y'all just weird as hell and then if i would have called like i said just like now <laughs> they still haven't done nothing so I'm still taking care of her. I'm still doing what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing. And then y'all want me to post her so bad. Post her. Oh, show us. What am I showing y'all her for? Why would I do that? I said from jump, I'm not posting this baby. And if you think I'm lying, okay. I done, had, I done brought her to the studio with Myra and her manager. And shout out to them because they treated her with nothing but love. But I done brought her to the studio with me. I done, I done spent $500 on some shoes for her. 
Oh, I'm lying. Y'all y'all want me to just drop all that? Now, I didn't make a GoFundMe. I didn't say, y'all, give me some money for this baby. Oh, my God, I need this. Whatever. What reason do y'all think I would make up something like that and then go to the extent of having my baby uh, uh, putting my daughter up in it? Because Myra explained why she, why she was giving her clothes up, why she was giving her food, sneaking her food in the house. She didn't tell me at first. Like, y'all, bro... I don't know, the internet is so fucking cruel. And y'all, I don't even see how people could turn this situation to something negative. Then the nasty comments is just crazy. People commenting, why would I bring a trauma child in my house around my kids? And why am I helping when I, when I keep saying I'm a single mom? That's why, cause I'm a fucking mom. Cause I have a little girl. Cause I was once that little girl. What, what, what type of person would I be to turn my back on this child? That, I'm not saying it, it, it makes me a hero or it don't make me a hero or whatever, but I'm just saying I feel like that's the human thing to do. Period. I feel like that's the human thing to do. But anyways, um, I don't know, y'all. My birthday tomorrow, I'm going to be 27 years old. Actually, my birthday in a few hours. I'm going to be 27. I'm going to have me some drinks, listen to some music. And yeah, God bless y'all. How would you ask someone to get guardianship over their child? Like... She see that I do everything for her baby. She don't care. I do her hair, y'all. I'm taking. I, I made the distance appointment. She didn't. She didn't. She didn't call and make the distance appointment. She didn't care that how we was gonna get there tomorrow. She didn't. She didn't give a fuck. Like I make sure she eats. I make sure she takes lunch to school. Like. Everybody keeps telling me, like, just ask her, just ask her. That's kind of hard, like, especially when the person is already angry. They just have an attitude. Like, how do you just come out and say, bitch, give me your baby? <laughs> like, how do you do it? I'm not trying to be funny, but, like, me as a parent, it don't matter what type of parent I am, I would feel offended. Bitch, what the fuck you mean? Can you have my child? Can you get guardianship my child? I don't want to take no benefits from her, no child support, county benefits, Social Security, whatever she get, I swear to God, she can keep it. But, I don't know how to act. You care, count y'all fucking days. Y'all did me so fucking wrong, and I, I'm so mad. I told them the whole story. I'm literally crying. They hung up on my ass, because I'm getting frustrated, and it's hard for me to, like, really express myself without getting mad. I told them the whole situation. Like, I done made this baby a whole doctor's appointment. She got a hole in her tooth. Y'all, the, the, um... This who office by me don't accept kids or don't accept you care, whatever the case may be. So the only place that was available, they was talking about a couple months from now and all this. So it was a place that said they'll take her Monday. Um, and it's like 30 minutes away and the Uber ride was like $32, whatever. So 32 there, 32 back. My car fucked up right now. I'm trying to get a free ride. I'm trying to get I'm trying to use the medical ride. I'm trying to get the get the medical ride. They did not want to want me to do it. The mom don't want to fucking help me. Like y'all, it's just so irritating. Like she see that I'm doing everything, that she just putting everything on me and she is it's like it's whatever. But anyways, shout out to y'all because they do take a village. Um my friend Shakira sent me fifty dollars to get baby girl there. And somebody else sent me money so I can save my little my little coins I got. But shout out to y'all though, for real. We're gonna get her. Um, took it care of. She haven't been eating because she said it hurts. She was crying. I never had like a really bad toothache, so I don't know, um, you know how bad the pain is, but I'm guessing it's it's really bad. Um, I hope they take care of it tomorrow so we can just get everything out the way because I know how doctors appointment be. They have you come there, they see you, they like we'll see you next week. Like, no, let's fix this right now. And I hope that's what they're gonna do, y'all. Fingers crossed. Um, but yeah, that's, that, that's the update. So a lot of people been asking me for an update. If I upload some on my Instagram, they be like, update with the little girl. I go live. They be like, update with the little girl. If I post TikTok, update with the little girl. It do not be pertaining to her at all. And that is very frustrating. I told y'all, if something drastically changed, I will let y'all know. There's no update to give y'all. So y'all haven't been getting an update. But let me just address a few things. Let's be real here. Child protection do not like removing kids from the home unless they are being essayed or like brutally beaten. If we're being honest. Um, you don't have any food, they're gonna give you food resources. 
you don't have any clothes, they're gonna give you a clothing voucher to get some clothes and shoes. Um, you behind on rent, they're gonna give you emergency assistance. They're just gonna send you a bunch of resources. You don't have furniture, oh, they're gonna get, they're gonna send you to a place like Bridging or whatever that that donates free furniture for you know families. Because we have all those resources out there, right? So with baby girl, there's no change, y'all. She still comes down here. She eats here breakfast, lunch, and dinner, goes to school from here. Um, she takes showers here, baths here, watch TV here, wash her clothes here, does everything here. Now, somebody comments on my post and was like, um, you dry begging or whatever the case may be. No, y'all be so mad when the internet is helping someone. Like, y'all have to understand, right? I'm a single mom of two kids. And I just unexpectedly took on this child because she's mine now. And let's be for real, a lot of y'all keep saying like, jot everything down, keep calling child protection, keep calling, keep calling, keep calling. Y'all, at this point, that's my baby. So if they come and take her, they're, they're taking my baby. I gave them the information that they need and they do what they want with that information. Before I was like hounding them down to remove her, I'm not going to do that. I'm not gonna do that unless I see something like, you know what I'm saying? Unless she's being beaten. But at this point, she's mine. So, like, I would really be bawling in tears if they was to come and remove her now. Because I've been doing everything for her. And I love this baby. So, now I'm trying to see if I can go a different route and just get guardianship. Yes, I, I be talking to mom because I had to take her to her doctor's appointment because she didn't want to or whatever. Um, and she got a feeling. Or her dentist's appointment, my bad. Um, just like I took her to the ER, y'all. Um, this is my baby. So, and back on the dry bagging, y'all, I could have made a GoFundMe when there was millions of people clicking on my page. The video got 14 million views, millions of people clicking on my page. I could have made a GoFundMe. It was like, hey, y'all, yes, I do have my own cash app in, but um you know a lot of people don't see that whatever that and that's been on my page before this whole situation if you know you know that's been on my page and yes a lot of supporters have donated um five dollars ten dollars fifty dollars somebody even donated 250 dollars and thank you because guess what i was able to get her like five pair of shoes um i got her some pants some blankets um and it's some stuff that she did take up to her house because she wanted to and i wasn't finna argue with her about it y'all because that's what she wanted to do but i was able to get her food snacks like all of that money was used towards her now as far as like the um uh, wish list i do want to make a wish list because the kids want like um lunch boxes they want new backpacks and stuff like that and i feel like if y'all want to do that, y'all can for sure. And I would appreciate that. The person that did say I am dry begging, keep in mind, I do all this by myself. I don't get benefits for her. So any little help that that the community going to do for me, baby, I'm going to take it. Is you cool? The fuck? I pay over three to 4000 a month in, in just bills. You know what I'm saying? by myself bro i don't get child support for neither one of my kids my baby dads do not help me with neither one of my kids and if you a mom and you a single mom then you should understand unless we fucking rich out here everybody need a fucking helping hand let's be for real that's why every time i see a homeless person i'm i'm helping them whether if you finna go buy a bottle of liquor or some cigarettes or you really finna go buy some food whatever that's that's between you and god you know what i'm saying if I see a person with a GoFundMe and, you know, they GoFundMe don't really got much, they fighting cancer or, you know what I'm saying, they got shit going on, I donate. And I and I just pray that they do the right thing with the money. That's the type of person I am. So everything that was donated to me was definitely used for baby girl. Now, people did say, you know, get your nails done, get your makeup done. Or somebody sent me a Bath and Body Works um, and a massage um, voucher or whatever. I love gifts like that. They sent it straight through my email. They didn't They didn't have to send me no money. Like, y'all really be hating when people be doing stuff. I see that y'all do that a lot. When people videos go viral and the internet start helping, um, y'all get mad. Y'all got to calm down. Chill out. That's why y'all be blocking y'all own blessings. Y'all, I just got one of the best messages. I'm finna read it to Myra. She, she, she still got her pajamas on. She don't know what's going on. Hold up. So, I'm finna read this message to Myra. Hi. 
I saw your video of Princess Myra saying she wanted to go to Disney World. I actually work at Disneyland. And if you and your family are ever in California, please reach out to me because there be nothing I love to do more than to find you guys into the park for a day or a couple. Though I can only sign three people at a time, I know my friends will also love to help. And they will sign in more people if there's more than three. I just love how much you guys are doing to help this little girl. And there's nothing more much I can do. Hold on, our heads in the way. But yeah, y'all can pause read the rest. How you feel about that? I am about to cry. You about to cry? You about to cry? Oh, my God. You want to go to Disney World? You want to go to Disneyland? Oh, she's crying, y'all. Hold on, hold on. Okay, y'all. She's a girl. <laughs> Are you happy? Yes. <laughs> so she's really happy. And then, y'all, she's been working so freaking hard. She just put out a bomb song. I don't know why TikTok shadow banned that song. Please go watch her song. Tell them go watch her song. Go watch my song. Yes, watch her song. She did really, really good. So kids, Bob, and I'm giving away a hundred dollars to the best video to it, and she's going to vote next Friday. Who wins? They need to shout their name out in the live. Okay. So yes, thank you so much. We love y'all. We love y'all. Don't we love them? Say we love y'all. I we love y'all. <laughs> so let me tell y'all. Um, basically a story time on why I cannot legally adopt a child ever I'm guessing in life but um, a lot of people don't know this about me um, but it is what it is it's my business I'm putting it out there I just want to share with y'all so y'all can stop telling me like adopt 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 so to make a long story short when I was younger, I was getting um, touched by a person close in family. I'm not gonna say his name or I'm not really gonna say who the person is because it don't matter, but whatever. So one day I kind of lashed out. Um, I was like 16 years old. I was washing dishes and they came up behind me trying to nibble on my ear. And I pulled out a, y'all know it, K-N-I-F-E, I don't know if I can say that, <laughs> but I pulled out a, yeah, and went straight for his face. So did I do anything to his face? No, but I had a little gash. It was right poked at his eye. So, you know, blood was coming down and the police was called um, and they came in like, y'all, they had guns on me. Um, they was trying to take me out. They was yelling, and it was a fucking... So I was, I mean, I guess that's how it is, but I'm 16 years old, you know? So immediately, y'all, they took me to jail. I went to JBC, Juvenile Detention Center. I get to the Juvenile Detention Center. I'm telling them, you know, everything that happened. Y'all, they treated me like a real criminal. They didn't give a fuck. They didn't care about nothing. So eventually, you know, we started going to court and stuff like that. And I was telling the people like, y'all, this man been touching me. I've been reporting it. Um, I didn't even told CPS, all type of stuff. Like, you know, so they was, they wasn't really hearing it. But then they started doing investigation and see that he was a registered sex offender. Um, that it has been multiple reports to CPS that this been going on. So boom, right? I go to a group home um, for girls. And like I said, y'all, I was being treated like a criminal and I really hated that. And I feel like that's why I'm so fucked up right now because when I was a little girl, I didn't, I really don't want to get into that. So, um, you know, when it all came down to it, they told me like, um, you know, due to the circumstances and you being a minor, it's gonna be off your record at 18, expunged, whatever, da da da. So I'm like, okay, cool. Y'all never knew the shit was still on my record. I got every job I wanted, crib, whatever. And then um, I tried to adopt a few years ago, um, someone's child and they called me back and told me that it came up on my, my juvenile report said that attempt murder and terroristic threat and all this so i am not um able to adopt that's crazy as fuck like how are y'all using our juvenile records against us i'm not that person no more but <clears throat> 
I was told um, once you are in the system, like if you have been um, like in CPS before, that they do that. They dig into your juvenile records. But if, you, if I was a normal person, never been in CPS, whatever, they would never have been able to have access to that. So that's why I can't legally adopt and it's fucked up. And y'all might comment and I know y'all like to dig and might be like, it's more to the story. I promise you, it's not more to the story. That's literally what it is. Like, that's what I was told why I'm not able to adopt. And let me just say this, even though I am still hurt and still damaged and still fucked up, I forgave everybody, um, you know, but I feel like, I felt like for a long time that I was just, it, it's too late for me to get help. Um, the damage is already done. I'm a fucked up person, um, but it's not. And I don't know why I was so ashamed to say that I've been in therapy. I've been in therapy for only a month, y'all, and it's been helping. And it's, it's making me become a better person. So it's never too late to get help. But I just think it's fucked up that my juvenile record was pulled up because I was in CPS. That's so fucked up. Like, y'all feel like because kids come from a a bad background or a, a bad home that y'all hold that against them. So now I'm not able to adopt no kids because of that. I'm not that same person. And I had to defend myself. Like... So that is why I help baby girl the way I do because I was once that little girl. I see comments where people be like, be careful bringing a trauma kid into your home. Uh, she can reflect those things up on your kids and all this that I will not turn my back on her. Cause I wish I had somebody like that when I was growing up, when I was telling people and didn't nobody fucking believe me until it got to the point where I'm getting arrested and going to fucking JDC. So, yeah, that's that's my story. I really don't really want to go all into depth about it. So it's no part two. That's literally it. That's why I cannot legally adopt. First of all, can we pause for a second and just give this young lady a round of applause, a standing ovation, something to let her know that we appreciate all of the efforts that she has done to try to make sure this little girl finally feel some love and acceptance around her since her trifling ass mama can't give it to her. Can we just give her a round of applause for that? Because she could have just saw something that brought her concern and did nothing, but she saw something that brought her concern and she took action. So I think she deserves a round of applause for that because we live in a day and age where most people aren't going to do anything. Most people gonna sit back and say, that ain't none of my business. That's between that woman and her child. They would have seen that little girl sitting in the park and they would have pulled their kids to them and done nothing. So the simple fact that she saw this eight year old little girl and refused to allow this girl to sit in a park by herself any longer and continue to feel unwanted any longer to the point where she actually made this girl almost a part of her own family is absolutely commendable. Commendable. Now allow me to say this, and this is something that I would share with anyone who likes to share personal story times on the enter of the net. What we have to always remember is when we put our personal stuff on the enter of the net, we are inviting people into our lives. And because we are inviting people into our lives, people are going to want an update. People are low-key voyeurs. We like having glimpses into the lives and situations of others. Some people fantasize about it right and for some people it's their escape from reality to fantasize and get a glimpse into someone else's reality that's why we follow them so that we can be notified when they go live or post videos because we want an update so when we invite the world into our situation then we can't get frustrated when they start wanting updates from us now, I do understand that some people can go overboard. Some people are just downright stalkerish and sick. The inner of the net is a sick place. It can be a twisted, dangerous place. So that's why you have to be really careful about what you share because people are going to be curious. They're just going to be curious and want to know. So um, I say that because I've seen a lot of people 
um, like Dinesha, who will make mention, y'all keep asking me for an update. Yeah, people are going to do that when you invite them into the into your lives, especially into those innermost intimate portions of your life. And a situation like this, dealing with a child who's been neglected, and you have to understand that other people have gone through neglect too. So they probably want to know how it turned out for this young lady. People are going to want to know. So we can't get frustrated when people ask us for what we invited them into. And don't get me wrong, that's not a knock against her. She did nothing wrong. Even in the statement that she made, she did nothing wrong. I'm just saying this to let us know that when we invite people into our lives and into the inner sanctum of us, people are going to want to update because we invited them in. So they're going to want to know how it turned out. So um, that's just something we always got to remember when we put ourselves out there. But there's a few things about this story um, that we're going to talk about because we are going to talk about this sperm incubator that this little girl was forced to call mom. Yeah, we're going to talk about her because we as women spend so much time talking about these men and talking about how trifling they are and how they don't handle responsibilities and how they don't take care of their children. And here you have this little eight-year-old girl who's being put out the house by her mom at eight years old, being forced to walk long distances away to a park and sit while her mother went on a date with a nigga. Are you serious? Are you serious? So no, no, today isn't about the men. Today is about these trifling ass moms who are out here not taking care of their responsibilities. Because how, how, how do you carry a seed within your belly for nine months? Some people, of course, we do understand that they do have their children prematurely. But how do you carry another living being on the inside of you? go through hours of labor, even going through C-section, to have this person removed from your body that you decide to keep and then treat them like this. Please help me understand what kind of world that we live in. Believe your eight-year-old child walking in the cold and sitting in a park for hours on end and you don't even give a damn. This, this is the kind of world that we live in, this, this kind of world. And guys, men, please help me understand as men, as thoroughbred men, how in the hell can you lay up with a woman and go on a date with a woman that you know has children and you're not concerned about how she's treating them? Oh, you're part of the problem. You are, you're part of the problem. You're the type would turn a blind eye to your baby mama if she was doing it to one of your kids. So yeah, you're part of the problem. You're not exempt. Because how? How can you willingly, especially if you have children, how can you willingly lay up with a woman that you know, you know is mistreating her children and you're not concerned? As a parent, there is absolutely no way I could be out enjoying myself on a date, on a date, knowing that my kids weren't okay at home. No way, no way. As a parent, as a woman and as a mother, there's no way I could be out on a date with a man that does not take care of his children. One plus one equals two, because if I get with you and you're not taking care of yours, how are you going to treat mine? There is no way. And again, I say, this is what our children have to look forward to. The environments that our children are growing up in, day in and day out. Not to mention this baby had to sit in the park when now we have to worry about kidnappers and traffickers getting our children, all of these children coming up missing, and you go on a date and don't care about where your daughter is, if she's okay, what she's doing. Neither one of y'all, just as much as she needs a chastity belt, needs to be sewn up so she can't birth nothing else, he needs to be castrated so he can't produce a seed at all because how? How? And we wonder why some of these kids are messed up now. Why they're messed up in the head now. Why some of us are messed up in the head now. It's because we had some moms like this. Some moms who didn't care anything about their kids. They were more concerned about being in the streets and getting some peen and kicking it and having fun 
that they just left their children to figure it out on their own. These kids didn't ask to be here, but this is the environment. These are the evil individuals that they have to grow up with. She even said one day she found the little girl outside of her door, her apartment door sleep on the floor outside of her apartment door. Her mama didn't care she was gone. And apparently nobody else in the apartment building cared that it was a little girl laying on the floor outside of someone else's door. That's why I say she needs to be commended because a lot of people will not say or do anything. A lot of people are gonna walk past like that's not my business. But her boyfriend had to take the little girl back upstairs and the mom had the audacity to say she was in the room sleep. In the room sleep. So you didn't even know your little girl was gone. Not only did you not know your little girl was gone, but your little girl felt safer outside the door on the floor of a neighbor's house than she did in her own. That's sad. That's sad. And she, if all of this is true, she needs to be locked up. She needs to be locked up. She said the baby's hair got pulled out. The baby told her her cousin did it. I, how many of y'all believe it was the cousin? That's all I'm gonna say. How many of you believe it was the cousin? So this girl has had to buy clothes for this little girl. She feeds her. She washes her clothes. She does her hair. She's taking her to the doctor. She's making sure this girl has all of the amenities she needs. What is this mother doing? What? And I completely understand because it's hard to make a decision that you think is the right decision, especially you know when you don't know how it's gonna fall back on you. I had a goddaughter that I raised from the age of 15 years old because her mother put her out when she found out she was gay. And there was no way I was gonna let this baby be on the street. Her mom would threaten to call the police on me. She threatened to call my pastor. She showed up at my house with the police before. And I told her, mama, you can do whatever you want to do, but I'm not going to see this baby outside on the street because you don't want to accept her. Because at the end of the day, the same Bible that you read says, with loving kindness have I drawn you. So how exactly do you follow after God's love by putting out someone that you birthed because they are living a life that you don't agree with? How? So I refused to put her out. And I knew it could possibly come with consequences, but there was no way, <laughs> no way I was going to know that baby was wandering the streets at night because her mother put her out because she didn't agree with her lifestyle. No way. No way. I took in another two children because the mother contacted me and stated, and I didn't even really know her. Our children went to school together. And she called me one day and told me that her lights were out and um, she didn't have anything in the house for the kids. And she said her sons was going to her mother. She needed someone for her girls to go. And I told her, I said, girl, send them babies over here. Send them. I didn't even have any money. I don't even think I was working. I was staying in a low income house, but there was no way I was going to look and see a mother that was struggling with her children. And I had the inkling of an ability to help her and didn't do anything. That's why stories like this stress me completely out because it's one thing to need assistance and not be able to get it. It's another thing to be like this trifling ass mama that just don't give a damn. Don't give a damn. And there's too many mothers out here like this and we're wondering why our children are having so many problems. So many problems. Then you have people who have the audacity the unmitigated goal to get on her post and have a problem because she's posting about her birthday and wanting to enjoy her birthday while she's going out of her way to care for a child that she had hard enough because this is the true definition of no child left behind. When you care enough to not sit back and know that a child is hurting and do nothing, but step up and do something, especially dealing with this system because this system is also failing. This system is also failing her. But I kind of get it. I kind of get it because the system has been manipulated and used so much for vindictive reasons. Yeah, y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, the women who call child protective custody because they're upset that the baby daddy is with another woman. 
or the boyfriend is with another woman. So you want to involve CPS to try to get the children taken so that you can hurt the other woman and the man. So now the system doesn't know who to believe. So now we got screwed up individuals. We got a screwed up system and the people who are hurting the most, the little ones, the babies, the ones who are in the middle. Those are the victims of this screwed up system with these screwed up people. So she starts talking about her birthday coming up and here comes the trolls on top of the fact that she's already making sure that this baby is okay. Now she has to deal with the trolls. She got to deal with the trolls asking why she's talking about her birthday because she should, dumb, dumb diddy. Why are we like this? Why are we so hateful? Some of y'all need some peen, some tussy, a combination of both, a hug, Jesus, something, because some of y'all are just hateful and bitter and it's sick. Just negative. You never have anything to say positive. You, have, you never have anything to post positive. You're just negative. I can post a video with an empowerment message, with affirmations and with encouragement, and here come the dislikes and someone who's gonna say something dumb in the comments that has nothing to do with the video. Y'all have got to get it together. Get it together and find a place of peace so you can stop being so negative, so envious, so jealous, so spiteful, and so damn hateful. So she's supposed to not have a birthday. She doesn't deserve to enjoy the day she was born while caring for someone else's child because the ma ain't doing nothing for her. And it was probably one of us because as black women, we can be so unsupportive, so spiteful, so envious. We can be so hateful and negative to each other. We don't celebrate each other when we on top and we talk about each other when we fall. We got to stop because if we ever learn how to really come together and become supportive, we would be a force to be reckoned with. But that's for a different conversation because y'all not even ready for that one. But whatever the people want to do for her, for what she's doing for this young lady, bravo, bravo. If they send her out of the country for her birthday, bravo, because she did more than most would do. She said supporters have donated 50, 25, $250. She's been able to get the little girl clothes and shoes, etc. What the hell does this mom do? And CPS refuses to do anything. Somebody blessed her daughter with tickets to, Den to um, Disneyland for her and two other people and stated that they can get their friends to get more tickets if she needed it. I know people would ask why give it to the daughter and not to the little girl. And this is what really makes me concerned about humanity because she's doing all she can for this little girl and she has other children. So the fact that someone even thought enough to say, while you're making sure this little girl is okay, I want to make sure your children is okay, is amazing. And it should renew our hope in humanity. It should really, it, it really should. This whole new little person has been inadvertently added to her family. And you never want your children to feel like someone else is getting all of the attention while you're trying to make sure someone else is okay. Are some of y'all okay? Because I hope y'all fingers cramp up and your device get a virus and begin to malfunction the next time you attempt to leave a negative comment or an ignorant comment underneath someone else's video or post. I really do. Because it's gotta stop. We gotta do better. And to the system, to the system that would allow this girl to not be able to adopt again because she attempted to defend herself against a predator to that system, it should show you how far we have slipped when a child defending themselves against a predator is considered a criminal. But kudos to this young lady, kudos to everyone who's supporting her. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this video. And hit that like and subscribe button. Consider becoming a confidant and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into the Hennessy Zone or the chalet for another show. That's all I have for this one. Thank you for joining us in the Hennessy Zone, where we always give straight talk, no chaser. So raise those glasses high. Hennessy, Hennadoo.
Think and drink responsibly and stay true till we speak again. Ta-ta.